Hi, this is Steve for TrueHollywoodTalk.com. We're with one of my favorite actors, Richard Real. I want to thank you for coming on True Hollywood Talk. Welcome. My pleasure. Good to be here. I've always been a fan. Just give a, a little background to our listeners. How did you become an actor? And where were you raised? Give us a little background. Um, I was raised in the Midwest. Uh, grew up in Milwaukee and Chicago. Uh, went to the University of Notre Dame. Had no intention of ever doing anything. And uh, somebody dragged me to an audition for a musical my senior year. Uh, I got cast and he didn't. And uh, after that, I just sort of uh, kept... I figured I'd keep working until somebody found me out. And so far, nobody has yet. Where, where were you born? Uh, Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. Wow, you got to like those Midwest people. They seem to have staying power. What was your first big break in film and television? You know, you just said you did the musical, but a lot of people do theater. They don't end up being a film and TV actor. Was somebody there that gave you a break? Um, yeah, actually. I, um, I was in Seattle working, and uh, it was... Um, uh, I think it was during the Olympics here in Los Angeles. Anyway, all of a sudden they were bringing a lot of shows uh, up to Seattle, and there was an American International Picture Show uh, called uh, Joyride, and they cast me in that and uh, as the bartender in this Alaskan bar. And it was with uh, Melanie Griffith and Robert Carradine and uh, uh, Desi Arnaz Jr. and Annie Lockhart. And uh, I got an amazing amount of work from it. <laughs> Is this something you grew up, like you said, you stumbled into by uh, accident doing the musical. What is it that gave you that longevity in a town where careers just come and go like a blink? Um, well, um, I, was, uh, I was willing to kind of go anywhere and do anything. And so for years uh, of doing theater, I was all over the country. And um, you end up with a lot of downtime when you're doing theater. So I started seeing uh, movies all the time whenever I was free. And I said, well, if I get a chance to do this, maybe, you know, maybe that would be something I would like to do. And I, was, um, I got a chance to do a Broadway show in New York. And uh, while I was there, uh, uh, Ed Zwick was casting Glory, and I auditioned for him, and he cast me. And uh, when Glory opened, uh, I came to Los Angeles for about a month, and it opened a lot of doors. And that was, that was probably the best opportunity. So I guess Ed Zwick would be the one that gave me the push. What's been some of the favorite movies that you've worked with and some of the favorite actors you've worked with? Um, well, um, I loved working on Mice and Man. It was a, such a great story, and uh, we had some terrific people go with John Malkovich and Gary Sinise. Um, uh, working on Casino was a real uh, amazing experience uh, with uh, Martin Scorsese and uh, Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci. And I'd worked with Joe before on a great little film called uh, um, Public Eye, and uh, he really got me the job at Casino. So. Uh, uh, that was a real wonderful experience. Uh, uh, I, doing fr uh, fried green tomatoes was really a treat. Uh, it worked with worked with all the people on that. John Abnett, of course, and uh, and all the wonderful actors and actresses involved with that that show. You know, I was just watching Godfather Two yesterday with uh, Pacino when he was saying to Fredo, "You know, you broke my heart." And you know that movie's coming. Did you ever get a chance to work with Pacino or De Niro in any of your films? Uh, well, uh, De Niro and Casino. Uh, Pacino I never have, uh, although I just did uh, a reading for him of a, of a, uh, of a play. I, I don't know why. Somebody called me up and said, look, we're going to go down to Al Pacino's office here in uh, uh, Beverly Hills and read this play for him. And so I said, okay. And you brought your Italian bodyguard just in case he messed with you, right? I had no fear that he would mess with me. In fact, I think he was probably uh, more, more scared of somebody coming into his office. What's Scorsese like? People tell me that he likes, like Clint Eastwood, he likes to do one takes, doesn't like to give his actors like 14 different takes. What's he like as a director? Um, well, he's not... Um, uh, when, we, when we worked on it, uh, there, the first shot that we did was in uh, uh, Rothstein's uh, house, and it's 270 degrees of windows. So that was uh, already going to be a, a problem. And then they had two uh, tracks, uh, curved tracks with cameras on each one going in opposite directions. And they had to wait until light was just right to shoot it, and then we were walking back and forth across the tracks. And we did several uh, takes to get the master. And then once we got the master, he wanted to change everything again. He doesn't want anybody to get in any ruts. But um, uh, he, it, it didn't seem that there was any limit of takes that he wanted to do. Uh, but he was, um, uh, the thing was that, that there was not sort of a moment of 
of uh, stasis. All the time there was something going on. He was telling a story. He was asking questions. He was talking to you about something. And that was actually great. He kept, keeps the energy going all the time uh, uh, between the actual takes. How do you prepare as an actor? Is it an instinct? You just go with the flow, you do research. Every, there's no one way to slay the cat, as they say. There's no formula. But how do you prepare? Is it something that Michael Caine once said, just fall and the camera will catch you every time, okay? Don't make it like you're falling. So what's your technique? Tell our young actors what you do. Well, um, I, I like to be as prepared as I can be when I go in. Uh, having read the script a few times, doing whatever research I think is necessary, uh, and really knowing uh, the whole script rather than uh, rather than just the scene we're doing for the day. I, I, I actually I think it was Cary Grant that said that he always memorized the whole script before he started shooting. Um, what it does is it makes you know where you're coming from in the, uh, the scene previous and where you're going uh, to be in the next scene. And then uh, I always feel that the more prepared you are, the freer you are to just let yourself fall. You do TV work, The Office. What's it like and what's the difference between television and film? Um, not much except the speed uh, in, in TV. Uh, there's never enough time in television. Everything is go, go, go. Okay, we got that. Let's move on to the next thing. Um, Independent film is on fire. <laughs>